Hey, how's it going, YouTube? I'm back in the video, and today I'm gonna be talking about do the Golden State Warriors really need Kevin Durant to win the NBA Finals? As now that you have seen that since Durant left for the four games that he's been gone, they've been playing pretty well and they still have yet to lose. So what I'm gonna be going into for this video is going to be what they've done since Kevin Durant left. Do they really need him? How good are they without him? And can they really win the NBA Finals without him? I'm gonna be getting into all that for this video. So without further ado, without rhyming on too much, let's get right into this video. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to be getting to for this video is going to be what have the Golden State Warriors been able to do since Kevin Durant went down with his injury? As the Warriors are currently 4-0 since he has went down and since he's left, and I mean they played very well as they have eliminated the Rockets when they were when they uh, needed to win those games, and they are currently up 2-0 against the uh, Portland Trailblazers right now, which is very very good. And I mean also to be able to shut out the Rockets when last year everybody was saying well the Rockets would have beat the Warriors if they didn't have uh, Chris Paul didn't get injured well the Rockets I'm pretty sure what tied 2-2 when Kevin Durant went down or 2-1 something like that and then Durant goes down so I mean the Rockets should have won that series according to what everybody else was saying last year but no Kevin Durant goes down and the Warriors end up winning the next two games to close out the series which was a huge huge win and huge thing for the Warriors to be able to do and then also right now being up 2-0 against the Blazers is very very impressive as well even though the last game was very very close they still showed that they are the better team and they are able to uh pull out wins without Kevin Durant especially the close ones which is something that we have not had to see them do yet and since Durant has left Steph Curry has been averaging 31 points per game 5.3 assists per game 5.7 rebounds per game and 43 percent from the three so he is scoring at a very high rate going back to his old ways and doing it very very efficiently and going back to the MVP form that we did once see him before Kevin Durant came to the Warriors and he started deferring to Durant. But also, Clay Thompson has been a big, big player uh, since Durant has left, averaging 27 points per game, 1.3 blocks per game, 2.3 steals per game, 2 assists per game, 2.5 rebounds per game, and 46% from the three, which is extremely efficient. When you can almost shoot 50% from the three, that is unbelievably efficient, and especially for a four game stretch. But he's also scoring damn near 30 points per game, and he's been a huge piece for them on the defensive end and helping Andre Iguodala out a ton. And then Draymond Green, who has been, who has been playing great, and he's gave them tons of energy been playing very good defense and be going back to that dog that we used to see him uh, 2015 where he was that energy dude defensive player of the year doing everything kind of like that um Dennis Rodman type player and that's what he's going back to and he's been playing very very well as he's um since Durant has left but now why are they playing so good without him like why are the Warriors actually looking like they're a better team without him which they are not they are not a more talented team they are not a better team without Kevin Durant get that out of your mind if that's what you're thinking but without Durant what it does that not only spaces the floor more and gives but it also forces them to pass the ball way more as I mean when you had Durant you could literally give him the ball every possession he would score at least 50% of the time if not like 70 to 80 80% of the time. The dude can score. He's one of the best scorers this league has ever seen. But now that you don't have someone like that, now yes, you still have great shooters in Steph and Clay, but now those are literally the only two scorers. So those two are like forced to put the offense go through them and really are forced to pass the ball around, which is why uh, Clay and Curry's points per game and averages have been going up because they have to do so much more on the offensive end. But with that forcing them to pass, it helps a lot. As I mean, people like Steph Curry who can take over the game but usually doesn't because they just let Durant do it because it's easier that way now Steph Curry is forced to go back to his old ways take over and that's why he's looking like he's so much better player same with Clay and same with Draymond Green and what this does is also not only does it force him to pass the ball not only does it space the floor but it also forces Draymond Green to step up offensively as Draymond Green can score he just doesn't do it because I mean when you have scorers like Clay, Steph and Durant why would you take the shot if you have those three to pass the ball to who are better shooters and scorers than you but Draymond Green is not a horrible score and he just doesn't like to score as much and he'd rather play defense and grab rebounds but since he's been out he's been scoring a lot more and Draymond Green is showing once again that he is still an all-star level player maybe even a uh, superstar level player but now my third reason is going to be that they're going back to their power in numbers which is a huge reason why they're playing so good as I mean when Durant was there, let's be honest, they went Sean Livingston, Andre Udala, and Andrew Bogut. Those were really the only three that were coming off the bench. But now that Durant got hurt, they know that they can't just give Curry, Clay, and Draymond 50 minutes a game and everybody else in like, the entire starting lineup 50 minutes a game. They have to actually give other people minutes, which is a big reason why they've been so good. And a lot of people would think, well, if they're going so deep in their bench and they don't play in, when Durant's on the floor, they're not going to be any good. Well, actually, people like Jordan Bell, Kevon Looney, Sean Livingston, and Jabrico – 
have been playing out of their mind and also Quinn Cook was playing very good as well and all these players that usually never even get to play in the playoffs that have been going off and been huge huge pieces and huge key pieces to their offense and defense and just overall in the game to be able to win these games especially Kevon Looney who went off and Andre Bogut has also been a very nice veteran to have on their team and but then Jordan Bell very young and he's been playing good Sean Livingston he used to be a big part but I mean he's gotten older and he yes he still gets minutes for you but I mean he's getting older and he's been playing good same with Jabrico he's hit a couple big threes so really they have been getting insanely insanely good production out of their like deep deep parts of their bench so I mean when you're able to, when you're able to have this great of a bench this good of a bench play this good of um offense without Durant and since he left your 4-0 can they win the finals it depends who they play. If if they play Toronto, yes, they can win the finals. As I mean, Kyle Lowry cannot guard Steph. Danny Green definitely can't guard Clay. Uh, Kawhi on Andre Iguodala. Yes, Kawhi is a 30 times better player than Andre Iguodala. But Andre Iguodala is going to be able to hold his own. He's can hold his own against almost anybody in the entire NBA. Draymond Green against Pascal Siakam. That's pretty much a wash because Draymond is such a good defender and Siakam can score. So that's pretty much a wash. And, wash. and then Marcus Saul on Andrew Bogut or Kevon Looney. Marcus Saul has really had a horrible playoffs up to this point. So I mean, really, that's a wash with either one of those two. Maybe we give a slight advantage to Marcus Saul. So if they play Toronto, they actually match up really good, even without Durant. But if they play the Milwaukee Bucks, I see a very, very big chance that Milwaukee would be able to upset them if they don't have Durant. As I mean, Eric Bledsoe is a very good veteran to have on Curry, and he can hold his own against Curry. He's not going to get blown out of the building. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon on Clay Thompson. I mean, that's pretty much a wash. Giannis on Kevin. I mean, Giannis on Andre Iguodala. Giannis is a beast. Yes, Andre Iguodala is going to be able to hold his own or whatever. But Giannis is going to get his whoever's on him. Doesn't matter. And then um, who's at the four? Malcolm? No, not not Malcolm Brogdon. Gian Giannis is at the four, I think. And uh, why can't I think of it? Chris Milton's at the three. So then you're going to have Giannis on Draymond and Chris Milton on I Iggy, which are two very good matchups for the Milwaukee Bucks. And then Brooke Lopez on Andre um, Andre Bogut or whatever, or Kevon Looney, whoever they decide to put in that center position. I mean, you could have to give that to the Bucks. So the Bucks without without Durant match up against the Warriors better than the Warriors match up against the Bucks. But if Kevin Durant does, then you put Giannis on Dur Durant on Giannis, and then your matchups are a lot more even than they would. So if they play Toronto, I do think that they could win the NBA Finals. But if they play Milwaukee, which is looking like they're going to be end up playing in the NBA Finals, I do definitely think that they, Milwaukee would have a puncher's chance, if not a very good chance, to beat the Warriors without Durant. But yes, Durant's going to come back, but this is just a what-if. Do you think the Warriors could win the uh, Finals without Durant? I want to hear our thoughts in the comment section below. And if you did like me, point like button, subscribe button, and the absolute word to me. And I hope you have a blessed day. Could I have a blessed day? So you need to have a blessed day. See you in the next video. Goodbye. Boo. Blah, blah, blah.